Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you beginning in how to make this shawl. Um, the yarn we are using is Dragonfly Fibers and Winter Wood. It's Pixie, it's 475 yards, 100% superwash merino. And this is the yarn that you got in your June Classic shipment from Yarnbox. Now, I've already got one uh, hank that I've spooled. And I am using a tensioner, which as you can see, all I did was I tore apart a pin and ran my yarn through it. So that's all there is to that. Okay, I do want to show you... Okay, we, there's yarn. Move this. The loom that I use for this pattern is the 80 peg 3 8 inch gauge. It's an adult hat loom from Cindy Woodcrafts. And I've taken, these are just, I got these cleaners at Big Lots for 40 cents a pack. Um, just the little, like the, those loom, plastic looms that you use the rubber bands to make bracelets and stuff. It's, these are the, the rubber bands used for this. Or you can go buy the hair rubber bands. You can get them really, really cheap too. And this is not like my original idea. Um, I don't remember the name of the woman. I'll look it up and put it in here. But actually I seen a woman in, I believe it was Cindy Woods. Um, the I Love Cindy Wood Looms Facebook group. And she, instead of just placing the rubber bands like this, she took and wrapped them around. Make sure that I even put that on the right peg. No, I didn't. Um, that's what she did. And I thought that was like a really, really clever idea. Okay, so. But you can mark your pegs however you choose to. And what I'm doing is mark my white peg and then after that I mark every fifth peg so we got four empty ones one two three four a marked peg one two three four a marked peg one two three four a marked peg all the way around the loom and we're going to be using 75 of the 80 pegs on this loom of course you're going to need your loom tool a pair of scissors a row counter will be very helpful and uh, a crochet hook to weave in any ends that you might have. And of course, please keep in mind this pattern is made to go with the beginning to end PDF. Um, the PDF, there's a link to it in the description below. Of course, if you are, if you got the June yarn box uh, classic shipment, then you already have the PDF that you can download for free. But you will have a chart in it and there's probably going to you're going to need to cut it out and tape it all together and everything but this is kind of like my tester chart so there's going to be some things that are changed in it but the way this chart is read is this way up so the pegs the rows going this way are going to be the pegs this is going to be the row itself so it's you're doing increases to a point then you're doing decreases all the way down things you need to look at in this chart you see the lines these lines represent which way the yarn is placed on the peg so you, you wrap a row let's say this is where we're at and it has the slant going towards the right. That means you take the yarn off this peg and place it on the peg to the right. If it's slanting towards the left, like the top of it's going to the left, then you take it off that peg, place it on the peg to the left. Uh, these circles, I will explain as I get to them, but they mark out every fifth peg, all of your pegs that are marked on the pattern. And what they will create is these little like points which that you will it won't show very well until you get to uh, blocking it 
uh, blocking this pad. This is something you will need to block, which I'll walk you through that too. But um, it, this pattern, it's going to look a lot different on the loom than what it will once it is blocked. That's basically what I was wanting to say. Okay, enough rambling. Let's get started. Let me I'll sit this. All right, try to set this so that it's in the shot so you can kind of see what's going on. Like right here, if I've scribbled the mark out, that means it's a mark that is to be ignored. But of course, you're not going to want to follow the chart just from what I show in this because um, there are going to be a few changes to it. But what we're doing is we're going to start with one peg and then we'll slowly increase to 75 and then we'll decrease back to one. It's going to make a big like triangle shape shawl. So what we're going to do to start is I'm just going to wrap the tail a couple times around my anchor peg and then peg one, which is that white peg that is marked with your rubber bands. That's a good place, a way to remember your starting peg. So all I'm doing is I'm e-wrapping it two times. There's one e-wrap to e-wrap. Take the bottom over the top. Now the increases, all I'm doing is double wrapping the peg. So that's one increase. Now I am going back to the beginning. Next time down. And when I'm wrapping the pegs, I'm trying to wrap them in the way the rest of the pegs will be wrapped. I'm going to increase, oops, increase to peg three. And you take your bottom loops over the top. So this peg I re-wrap. Go back to the first peg. See, for the first few pegs, there's nothing but e wrapping back and forth. So keep doing that with increasing one each time. When you're, if you're e wrapping from the white peg down, you will increase one every time you wrap down. Then you wrap back, then you wrap down and increase one. Wrap back, wrap down and increase one. Wrap till you get to the first marked peg. Right, we e wrap down and added this peg. Now what we need to do is we need to create the extra stitches here so that later we can pull them down and pin them. On here it's marked with just a circle just to show where you're at. But all I am doing is I'm going to, I've already added the peg, so I wrapped down, wrapped this one two times, took my bottom over the top, went all the way through, took the bottoms over the top. So this peg right here, we're gonna wrap once, take bottom over the top, wrap a second time, take bottom over the top, three, four, and five. Wrap it five times and then just go ahead and wrap everything else. Take your bottom loops over your top loops. And that's all there is to that part. Which coming up here in just a couple rows, we will start doing the uh, left decreases and right decreases to create the texture to this shawl. Okay. Okay, so we have increased to peg 13, which if we count, that puts us at 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. That puts us on this row right here. And as you can see, 1, 2, three, four, five. The fifth 
peg from the end is taken off that peg and moved to the fourth peg. Whichever way, if you want to count from this direction, you can. You want to count from that direction, you can. So we're going to follow it. One, two, three. If you're ever confused about where you're counting at, if you follow the line down and you find a circle one, you know that's at one of your marked pegs. So we got one, two, three, marked peg, four, five. So right now, we're going to take the loop off of peg four and move it over, off, to, off of peg five and move it over to peg four. Because right here, this is peg five and it's pointing towards peg four. That's the way the top is angling. So you move that. Let's push these bottom pegs, push all the loops down. And then we e-wrap everything. that over. As you can see, yes, somebody drew on my blanket here. Okay. This is the peg we moved. We went ahead and e-wrapped that peg too. We e-wrapped every peg. And you go through and take your bottom loops over the top, which the peg where it's moved, you're going to have two. Take them over. If you, It might be easier to take one over at a time. It just depends on your tension. You will get to where you have rows that have quite a bit of um, stitches being moved like these rows right here. See that's a lot of stitches being moved. So those ones your tension might get a little tighter on them. All right and honestly that's all there really is to this project. It's a lot of e-wraps and it's a lot of moving stitches. Um, it's one of these things that it's a lot more intimidating looking than it really is. And I really don't want anybody to be too stressed out about doing this project. Now, um, some suggestions I will give you is when you print out and paste together your chart, things that help me along the way are markers. So I just did this row right here. So I mark that, cover that row up so I don't see it. And when I do my next increase, because what we do is we've, we moved the stitch on the peg. We e-wrapped all the way back to the front. And as you can see that next row, there's an increase. It increases out one peg. So we will e-wrap and do an increase. See, and I just wrap that last peg two times. And I take the bottom peg over the top, kind of tighten it up, then go through and take all the bottom loops over the top loop. And then we look at where we're at. So we're going to take, let me zoom this in so you can see it a little better. Or you can mark it like this. We'll mark it like that. I think that's a little, for me, that's a little easier. Oops, wrong one. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you want to double check, we're moving it to peg four which is a marked peg. So peg four is a marked peg. Take the loop off, move it over. There's one in between. And now we take this one, you can see it's pointed in the opposite direction. So take that one off and move it over that way. Push everything down, E-wrap back to your first peg, E-wrap down and increase one, then you'll do your next row. Your row you do here always follows an increase or a decrease row. It'll increase up to the point and then it'll decrease back down until you get to just one peg left. So that's really everything you need to know to do this. Uh, find a way to mark where you're at on your rows. Use a row counter if you need to. Um, follow the written directions, follow the chart, 
whatever you find the easiest for you to follow. And I will show you a little bit more once we get a little farther along in the project. Project. We are now to the middle point of our shawl. So we are right here. I've already done this row, which I'll show you. I've got all of my decreases, increases, whatever, just the yarn over. I got all of that on there from that row. I do want to note this point, this peg right here, is the only one that I didn't wrap it five times. Um, I'm just going to wrap it just a couple times and take the bottoms over the top and just to give a little bit of an edge. So we'll just do three instead of five. So it's one, two, three. And then we're going to wrap all the way around. Um, I do have the tensioner here, which was just a pen casing for, I don't even remember who, what I got it off of. If it'll focus. Nope, it's not going to focus. It's just a pen casing that I used. Something else I wanted to show you real quick while I'm thinking about it. There's a lot of debate about your last pegs, which way is best to wrap them and such. You got three options. You can either skip the last peg and just start wrapping. That typically will help the fabric lay a little flatter, but it also can take some of the stretch out of the edges. You can wrap it behind and then start wrapping. Uh, basically like a figure eight. Let me zoom this in. Okay, so let me show you that one again. You can wrap it behind and around the front and then go, kind of like you're doing a figure eight. If you do it that way, I did some right at the beginning. Oh, sorry. See how we kind of have like the loops, the knots? You end up with kind of like these little, they look almost like little knots. Your only other option is, it's kind of weird and I always make sure I tighten it up pretty good before I do this, is you wrap around the front, kind of like you're doing your E-wrap and then you're basically wrapping every peg the exact same. If you do it that way, look at this, how much nicer, you have a nice smooth finished edge. So for this project, that's what I'm doing. Go ahead and get this all wrapped and then I'm going to wrap all the way back to the first peg. Let's see, we'll wrap back to peg one, which I'll do the whole round real quick so you can see how fast it is to wrap. And to keep in mind, my camera is right in front of me, so it's actually in the way a bit, so I'm really not able to wrap this as fast as I normally would be able to. And this is another reason why the tensioners are so nice to use. It can cut down the time, your work time just substantially. Okay, so you're gonna take your bottom loops over the tops and then I'll show you how to do the decreases. Very All right, simple. thing to remember, your decreases and increases for the shaping of it always on the same side. So this is the side we were increasing. This will be the side that we are decreasing as well. Before we push all the loops down and e-wrap the row again, what we're going to do is we're going to take the loop off of the very last peg, which in this case is our point. We're going to take it off. We're just going to move it to the peg before, and that's all there is to it. If it is one of your marked pegs where we e-wrap the peg, e-wrap, wrap, e-wrap, wrap, make like a little chain, of five all you do is if it's one of those pegs when you you go ahead and decrease it e-wrap all the way down take your bottoms over top and then and then sorry go ahead and wrap this peg five times before you start your next row uh, very very simple the big thing you just got to pay attention to which direction the slants are angled uh, that's probably the hardest thing with this and I do want to kind of talk about what I am using here this is a removable sticker that I can place I can take off and replace here's what the pack looks like 
Stitcher's GPS is what it's called. It kind of shows a little bit of the ways you can use it. And here's the back if you want to see it has the website and everything. They're removable, they're reusable. The pack I got has two sheets in it. The one I am using has the clear middle part. The reason I'm using this is I find it bothersome to move this for every single row. Since I know these circles are my marked pegs, that's the main thing I need to keep track of. In between these circles, I can count, see what peg I'm on, and pretty much find where I'm at. Uh, but for this, to help me out, I just did my circle row, so it's right above it, so I was able to fall along that row. It marks out that row, that row. It really helps me to follow along, and there's more of them. For the parts where it's longer, if I'm having trouble seeing exactly what row I'm on, because I don't want to mix that up, I can place more of them up through here to help mark out my rows more. At this point, you are halfway done. All you do is keep finishing out your chart until you get to one loop left on the loom, which, of course, I will show you. Once you're down to just one loop, left on your loom what you're going to do is you're going to take your working yarn pull it up through that single loop go ahead and pull it through a second time take it off and there you go now when you cut it you only need to cut just a few inches because that's going to lock that in once it's blocked and everything we'll worry about weaving the ends in but now what you need to do which i'll show you what this looks like once it's off the loom, you can see it's curling kind of all over the place. You can sort of see the details in it, but not real much. So what you're going to do is take and soak it, uh, get it really, really wet in water. And then you're going to, you want to get some of the excess water out. Do not wring it. Absolutely not. Do not wring it. Do not wad it too much and definitely do not pull on it what you want to do is just as it's wet kind of just fold it up if you want or you can just lay it flat put like a towel below it and a towel above it and I actually just kind of step on it and that will get 90% of the water out of it once you do that I'll show you how to block okay now once you get it wet and then you uh, dry it out as much as you can just by hand just by stepping on it or however you want to do it you want to lay it out flat now what the blocking is going to do is we're going to shape it see how it's wanting the curl at the top you're going to untwist that curl and you'll be pinning down this very first row that's going to help it keep its shape and keep it from curling again and with blocking what's really cool is you can just you can really manipulate the fabric so much with blocking uh, I'm gonna start with pinning just this top edge so I've got this first row I'm gonna pin that down I want to make sure no nope, I'm gonna need to pin it all the way up to the top now when I'm using the block this is just like a foam board I have you can buy actual blocking uh, boards and stuff you just want to make sure that you're blocking it in the shape you want it to stay in so if you want your edges completely flat you want to block them completely flat I'm gonna go ahead and do the top and then I'll show you a bit with the sides. I've got the whole top pinned up. Now we need to pin the rest. And there's a couple different ways you could do this, but to start, I find the little knot right in that center point that we did, which of course you can go back as many times as you want and adjust how all this is laying so that you get it exactly how you want it. But basically for the sides, how I am going to block this is find all of the places where I did the extra. See what I'm doing? Let me zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm looking at here. 
Okay. So right here, that's where I was at um, the part on the end where I did like the five stitches, just e-wrap, take over, e-wrap. It created like this bit of this loop. I'm gonna grab from the stitch right above it, kind of pull that down. I'm gonna try to keep them all level. Let me zoom out a bit. Try to keep those, oops, sure got stuck. Keep all those level to an extent and then pin them in and that's the only thing I'm gonna pin on these sides. See that one, I wanna pull it down a little more. And when I'm done, I might come back and pull them down even more. See like this one, yeah. I'll bring it down a little more. But you can pin them like I am or you can pull it like this and do sharp points just with the just like that you can do the sharp points or you can pin it to where they're not quite as sharp I prefer to take just a stitch right above it bring that down pin it I will go ahead and do that on both sides and show you. I have it all blocked out. Move my uh, move my camera around so you can kind of see. Now my table is actually a little too small, so I actually have the end kind of pinned down there uh, to hold it. Now once it's on here, uh, a couple things you need to think about when you're blocking this out. You don't want to pull the edges so tight that there's really no more give to them because you want this to feel, you want it to drape and you want it to feel nice. So as you can see, look at this, like the edges, I did a lot of pins just so the edges wouldn't be too tight. And if you pull this too tight, it will distort the lines and everything in it. Once it's all blocked off, all your details mainly around the bottom edges for the most part. So what I did was just kind of stretch. Don't do this too hard. I basically took and stretched up a little bit because this right here and like through here that's just solid so you don't want that to be stretched out too much and you can kind of play around with it if you notice that your lines aren't going completely straight you can unpin and remove them like right here I got a spot I can see that's curling this way so I'll unpin a few of these and move it over enough so that they're not it's not curling that way. It will be going straight. You just want to make sure your edges, if you want this edge straight and flat, you want it to be straight and flat when you pin it. If you want this to be uh, all the arches in it, then you want to pin it that way. That way the finished project will look like you want. Now if you do block it and you're not happy with how it turns out, Throw it in some water, get it, soak it again, and and tr and reblock. That's not hard to do. I'm gonna let this sit overnight to dry really good, and then I will unpin it and show you what the finished project looks like. Right, I've taken all the pins out of it, and here we go. You can see the edge, and I'll kind of shake it up and wad it up, and you can see. I'll lay it back down it's still keeping its shape. Now sometimes, oops, sorry, sometimes your edges will be a little stubborn. You might want to uh, block them a second time or if you block it and you don't like, see how I got a few points, some the cat had laid on this last night while it was drying and kind of stretched it in a spot. So I got a couple points there. All I have to do is just re-wet it and re-block it and we are good to go. There we go, it is all done. Um, if you have any questions or comments at all, you can either leave them in the comment section below or my email is in the description below and you can email me. Uh, the biggest thing you need to remember when doing this project 
is you have to follow that chart exact and you have to make sure you're doing your um, at the ends your decreases and your increases the way it is showing or else your shape will be off and it won't look right and it can be hard to correct that once you miss a spot without tearing a bunch of it out or maybe even just starting over. Thank you so much everybody who watched this video. I really do hope everything was clear and understandable. And don't forget to subscribe.